Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Jorge Morales and in today's video we are going to be reviewing one of the newest, latest generation of the NVIDIA professional graphics cards, which is the NVIDIA RTX A4000. And it is branded as the most powerful single slot GPU for professionals. Today we are going to take a look to this one. Let's take a look how it, what features it offers, how it performs, and if it really makes the name of the most powerful single slot a graphics card for professionals that are in the market. I just going to spoil you a little bit. This is a great graphics card. It's actually uh, a really great graphics card. Performs very good and it packs really a tons of power. If this is the right graphics card for you, we are going to try to find out today. So stay tuned and let's start. So as always, the NVIDIA RTX professional graphics cards, they are coming from the brand of the NVIDIA Quadro. Probably you remember, I mean, I still use the name of NVIDIA Quadro and they are usually quite expensive when they are launched and not a lot of you guys are trying to get these ones, but actually they are targeting or NVIDIA is targeting a different kind of market for this kind of graphics card. It's a professional, professional market, companies, uh, big industries in which usually people uh, with an IT department are in charge of purchasing of the workstations. But I mean, I really like this graphics card. I use it already since maybe, I think around one year, I have this GPU with me and I think it performs great, at least for my needs and for what I do. And actually uh, a bit of gaming, a lot of professional work, CAD, 3D modeling, rendering, the video editing actually for these channels. A lot of this happens into these graphics cards and I'm very happy with it. I'm really, really happy. And for you guys, now there is a really huge opportunity nowadays with this graphics card which is the price. Price, why? Because this RTX A4000 together with the 3000 series of NVIDIA GeForce, they were used heavily like one year ago or since two years ago for the Bitcoin history that we used to have. And nowadays, because now Bitcoin or mining of Ethereum or of Bitcoin is not profitable anymore using graphics cards, now there is a ton, like really a ton of graphics cards like this one in the used market. And you will say, Jorge, but they are used, they were used for mining, they are not going to perform well. In my experience with mining graphics cards, they perform actually exactly the same as normal graphics cards. Maybe they have a reduced span life, but for you, maybe it's the right choice because now this GPU, just let me tell you, when it came out in the market, like around one and a half years ago, the price, the original price of this was around 1,300 US dollars or 1,300 uh, euros here in Germany. Nowadays, you can find this so cheap in this local eBay client and sign that we have here in Germany or in eBay.de or in any other market, probably in the United States, you are going to find this around like 500 US dollars, 400 maybe US dollars. And this is like the new NVIDIA Quadro M4000s, P4000s, RTX 4000s. They are getting pretty cheap. Like not even the mining graphics cards, the normal graphics card, this RTA 4000 is getting pretty cheap. And now maybe it's a nice opportunity for you to get one of these. As I just tell you, the, I am using this like since one year, maybe more than one year, and it fulfills all my requirements, all my needs perfectly. I really, I, 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 of course, I'm always playing with graphics cards, but what this, what this GPU is offering you is, is quite nice thing. So I think that's a nice opportunity now for you to get one of these and let's talk about the features that this graphics cards offers. Let's go with the technical specifications of this. Let's start with the physical design. As we, as we just say, this is a single slot card, which this is actually, this is only the part of the this is only the board part, the circuit board, and the rest is the cooler, which is not a heavy cooler or like a really heavy duty uh, cooler system, but it does the job. In order to cool 135 watts, it's more than enough. And these graphics cards usually are not rated to um, uh, that much power consumption because the objective is to ensure reliability and usage every day, single day, for the whole week, for the whole year, in the whole life cycle of your workstations. If you are working on a company or if you are a design engineer or something like that, you always require to have a reliable device. And usually overclocking is not actually even allowed for these kind of devices. 
So that's why the it's a single slot, pretty compact as I just mentioned. And the nice thing is that if you are using like Dell workstations, Lenovo workstations, or HP workstation, or even your single the uh, built PC that you have, you can pack a lot of them in a in a machine. If you still are requiring multi rendering support of multi GPU computation for simulate for mechanical simulations in order to accelerate them, which is pretty cool. That's they are single slot. You can do. I'm not using. I, I mean, I, I I hope you can appreciate how small it is. One single slot devices in comparison, like an RTX 4090, which is like 40 centimeters and like seven centimeters thick. This is pretty cool. This is pretty cool. This is like the the old school single slot graphic cards and I think it looks pretty cool. For ports, we are using, we, are, we have actually for this car, we have four display ports. These are display ports. Let me check here exactly. It's a display port 1.4a and they are going, they offer you up to 8K connectivity, up to 60 Hertz, which is actually always like the publicity of these 8K, four monitors but who has an 8k monitor let's be honest and it has it has no hdmi this is very important if you are, have like an oled tv that you are going to use as a monitor as mine here it's not going to be directly compatible with it you need uh, an active adapter from displayport to hdmi in order to output 4k at 120 hertz and that's a shame a little bit because those adapters are, are quite expensive but it, yeah, it has only four display ports. If you are in a company, if you are a design engineer in a department, you usually have monitors that had that have display ports, so which usually is not going to be a problem. There is no, there is here just the um, Nvidia Sync connector and the stereo connector are still present in the single cut in the single cut slot devices, in order that you want to sync more graphics cards. And actually, there is a pretty cool feature that not a lot. A lot of guys, even myself, use that. But if you are, uh, if you have those specific requirements, it is still offer the the stereo audio output and the Nvidia synchronization power. The power that it requires this uh, device is or, or only a six-pin PCI connector for 135 watts is more than enough. This and there is no more demand. It's a matte black. The design is a matte black design with some uh, touches of gold which I, uh, in my taste actually looks pretty pretty cool looks pretty sick i hope you can you can see a little bit this side is just black and with gold accents in the back and in the front and the display ports are just usually here is the displays uh, the power inlets and the display outputs it's not that much to see in the design it's just pretty sleek single slot and pretty neat actually the the, the 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 design it has a total of 6144 CUDA codes which is actually great it's a huge number it's a huge amount of CUDA codes it has 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 it's not X it's just normal GDDR6 but it's insanely fast and in order to not lie to you I will read uh, here the specifications memory interface 256 bits 448 gigabytes per second the memory bandwidth it supports error correcting code for you guys that requires that feature is still present in this nvidia rtx a4000 which is actually a pretty cool thing that i personally use as well um, as i mentioned before 6144 cuda cost 192 nvidia third generation tensor cores and the second generation of ray tracing cores this is the second generation that i had in my in my head with 48 ray tracing cores and one maybe important thing maybe not for you or all of you guys the single precision performance of these machines it goes up to 90, 19 teraflops per second which is actually insane it's actually insane for a single slot gpu of course this is because of the high amount of cuda cores and the tensor cores for uh, machine learning applications that's why the single precision performance is quite huge which if you are using really a like tensorflow or pycharm or any other artificial intelligence or deep learning or machine learning accelerated application these graphics cards can help you really a lot in order to accelerate those such tasks it is pci express 4.0 pretty normal it's by 16 of course and the total board power that is 
uh, in the specification official from NVIDIA is 140 watts. Uh, the, power connect, the power connector, of, as we mentioned before, 1x6 one one pin PCI Express, and I actually correct myself, it does support only 4 4K display in the outputs with up to 4K 120Hz. And my experience in my OLED TV that I have here is the, old, is the LG OLED C2. It outputs 12-bit colors in HDR as well, of course, which is a great. This is it's great if you have such a TV. Let's talk now about if this is the right graphics card for you. Why, as I mentioned before, why it actually uh, makes sense nowadays? Because of the price now, I mean, if you can have a 6,000 CUDA cost, GPU with the newest Ampere technology of NVIDIA, ray tracing, and all the features of an NVIDIA Quadro graphics card for 500 US dollars, for 500 euros, maybe less, a little bit more, maybe. I think it's just all already this justifies these graphics cards. I mean, if you require the features of an NVIDIA Quadro graphics card, like if you are using SolidWorks for 3D modeling, this graphics card is going to be the best graphics card that you probably can get for your money. In performance, for SOLIDWORKS, if you are using CATIA as a design engineer, this is going to be amazing if you are using CATIA as a student, if you are using Siemens Unigraphic, Solid Edge, Solid Edge is free for students, at least here in Germany, I think in the United States as well. I mean, the complete package of Solid Edge for 3D modeling is free for students. And if you have this graphics card, if you are using Autodesk, Inventor, Fusion 360, this graphics card is going to push really the boundaries of what you can do with that kind of software, which I think is worth a lot. Before, with other kind of graphics cards, or if you are used to get NVIDIA gaming graphics cards, if you are a student, because always you're selling money is kind of a topic, always when you're a student, but if you can afford such an amazing device, such an amazing GPU with a low amount of money, like 500 US dollars, I mean, go for it. This GPU is going to make a lot of sense for you. And I am very happy. I usually, I, I, I used to have two of these in my Lenovo workstation that I was using as a, my mainly driver workstation. And it just performs amazing. For SOLIDWORKS, it visualizes in order to do ray, ray, ray tracing, uh, accelerated renderings. This performs amazing. For Abacus, if you are accelerating your mechanical simulations for finite element methods, Perfect. If you are using ANSYS for pre-visualization, for post-visualization, this GPU is going to help you a lot, like really. And of course, if you are also as, as well a creator and you are using Blender or you are using Rhino, uh, Rhino from, uh, for 3D modeling as well, for surface modeling, this GPU is going to help you a lot. If you are an architect using Revit, using Autodesk, I'm very happy with it. It just looks amazing, amazing looks as well. And it's not that much powerful, like a 3080 or something like that, but it's going, to make, it's going to make an amazing job. At least for me, 3D modeling, I will show you now what it can really do, even with an older laptop, like an eighth generation of Intel Core laptop, I am going to use it with an external GPU in this case, just to show you that it can do a lot of things. And I'm very happy with it. Probably if you find this for the right price, you are going to be very happy as well with this. And it offers all the features that an NVIDIA Quadro offers. Totally all the features that NVIDIA Quadro offers, as well all the features that the RTX devices are offering, like NVIDIA Broadcast, in order to use uh, uh, artificial intelligence, accelerated camera effects, microphone effects, and all those kind of things are amazing. If you are recording as a streamer and you are using OBS Studio, this graphics card uses as well the NVIDIA encoders technology in order to accelerate as well the video encoding and decoding. And it's just amazing. I use personally uh, DaVinci Resolve since years as well. And in DaVinci Resolve, there is absolutely no problems in order to accelerate as well all the timeline effects and all the normal daily tasks that, that, that video editors really use, even if it is Adobe Premiere Pro as well. I have as well Premiere Pro. And it's just an amazing job. I am really happy with it. And of course, if you again find it to the right press, this is going to be an amazing graphics card for you as well. Let's now do a live demo. Um, I am using here an XPS 15 from 4G. It's, it's already 4G old. I think it's like from the 8th generation. It has an Intercore i7, uh, 4 cores, 8 threads. It's like really 
a good, a very good laptop actually, but from four years ago. Today is just a pretty standard laptop, which is still behaves pretty good, pretty solid. It has an NVMe 500 gigabytes SSD, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, uh, integrated Intel graphics card, and it has as well a uh, dedicated AMD M Vega graphics card. That, uh, back in that day, it was actually pretty good dedicated graphics card into a laptop. It was one of the first combinations in, in between Intel CPUs and AMD graphics cards, which it was pretty good. But I have the RTX A4000 in a Razer external GPU enclosure. So just as a disclaimer, you are not going to get the full performance now in this live demo, but actually that is what I wanted to show you, that even if it is uh, via an external GPU enclosure like the Razer Chroma X that I have here and an old laptop, this graphics card is still packing a really good performance punch. It's going to help you a lot if you are a student, if you have an old laptop that has Thunderbolt 3 already. It's going to help you massively, really. I already have installed my Solidbox student version. I have the Katia version as well uh, of the student. I have as well the Fusion 360 already installed here and the God of War 4 uh, in order to play some basic games. So let's try it and take a look how it, how it really looks. I'm going to try to do my best here and do this live demo and go together with you in order to see how this RTX A4000 can really help you in a real life scenario. Uh, if you are a mechanical engineer student, if you are a design engineer, or if you are already, already only a gamer, a streamer that wants to have really nice performance out of these graphics cards, let's try to take a look together. Now I'm going to use Solidbox here. This is the student edition 2223, which is actually pretty standard in universities or in majors college uh, as a mechanical engineer or maybe a design engineer or product designer that you have access to Solidworks student licenses. So that's what I have here. And of course, I already have the drivers installed for the NVIDIA RTX A4000. Uh, this is the first time that I open it. So I'm just going to set some of the standard specifications and settings of this software and let's try to design just something pretty pretty basic in order to to take a look if everything is working properly so let's start as you can see here now i am using the this is a four core i7 18 uh, 8705g cpu from the eighth generation of intel core series so it's already actually almost five years old but it's still really really very good and this is the NVIDIA RTX A4000, which the video encoding is high because of uh, OBS Studio, which is recorded in the background. But if you see here, the 3D is already 20, it's only 24% of because of the SOLIDBOX. So let's start just doing some pretty, pretty basic stuff. Front plane, let's make just a circle. Let's extrude it, maybe just some 300 millimeters. Let's take a look. Of course, the drivers now are, of course, the drivers are recognized and the nice thing about having a Quadro graphics card is that you have access to all those features that you can expect from a Quadro graphics card, which are ambient occlusion, maximal performance with ambient occlusion in SOLIDWORKS, and the real view graphics, which is, I think, one of the most amazing things that SOLIDWORKS is really introducing since already like 10 years. So this is not pretty demanding, but let's try open a different model, a bigger model. Take a look here on Katia, for example. This is a chassis of a, a heavy truck. This is like, I don't know, I designed this like 12 years ago. No, no. Like 10 years ago, I designed this. This is like ready for manufacturing. It's actually uh, from a very respected and famous brand of um, big cars and trucks in the United States. So look, look at the performance of this. I mean, you will never encounter something and it's not only one chassis. I mean, this chassis has maybe like, I don't know, like 100 components, maybe 200 components, something like that. But take a look just how fluent everything is. I mean, and it's not only one, you can pack a lot of these designs, a lot of these assemblies in the same viewport and an RTX A4000 is going to handle it like, like really toys because this is very basic. And I am using an external GPU, don't forget. I am using an old laptop as well with a, with a normal four cores uh, CPU. And take a look now, this is SOLIDWORKS fully open as well here. Is 
still thinking because I open a lot of the of designs here, but this is for example like a surface modeling of a Ford F150 and it has a lot of surfaces, like really a lot, tons of surfaces and it is actually nothing, I mean it's nothing for a computer like, for, for, a, for a computer like this and for a graphics card like the, like the RTX A4000 is pretty pretty basic, pretty standard and everything is fully detailed we have the features of course of the real view we can turn it off and take a look how it looks it takes a moment and this is how it looks if you had a normal graphics card if you have a, a, an rtx 3090 4090 which is not a quadro graphics card you are missing this feature and this feature is unbelievable good for solidworks uses for professional uses so that is one model for example i have i have here another model of a robot layout that I was designing when I was in the, in the university in order to buy new robots and buy some works or build ourselves some workstations for the lab and take a look how, how fluent it is. I mean, this is pretty, pretty basic stuff for this graphics card. Even if you have a lot of components, it's going to be nothing for a graphics card like this. And we can, we can keep opening models like this one that we had. So with this, I really just wanted to show you how amazing is having a graphics card like this and how, because of you have these professional quadro cards, you have access to different features, and those features are the details that I always speak about, having this kind of professional graphics cards, and everything is going to be very, very fluent, and remember, the external graphics card enclosure is making a lot of distress as well in performance, and even that is working pretty, pretty good. I mean, like, all these, all these are surfaces, as I just mentioned, and it's going to look just amazing, just going to, it's just going to work, and it's going to have no problems at all handling these kind of things. For, we can go back to Katia, everything is pretty, pretty smooth. Even when I was a stu when I was working my first job as a design engineer for this huge company of, this, of chassis designs, I used to have an NVIDIA Quadro 2000 with one gigabyte of DDR3 memory in video. And even with that 10 years old NVIDIA Quadro 2000, I was able to manage one, two, three tons, tons of models in one viewport. Let me try to show you if I can, let me show you just how, how incredible it is having something like this. And it's going to be so, so much better because I mean, 10 years old, let's, let's put some models here and let's, I hope you, now we have four models in the same in the same viewport let's go to assembly let's change something let's try to make this more a little bit more dynamic let's let's put that one there maybe this one here this one here and just take a look how, how incredible how fluent it is and this graphics card is going to handle like 100 of these assemblies maybe more because it has no limit with 16 gigabytes of video memory it packs just a lot, a lot of energy, I will say. So let's close all those these things. Let's go to something more, um, a little bit user-friendly, like games, something that are you may be familiar with. And just let's go to take a look to God of War. I have installed God of War 4. And let's try, let's take a look how, how, it, how it behaves, the RTX A4000. Remember the enclosure, the external enclosure is going to hit a little bit the performance. But I just want to show you that it can still make unbelievable things. Uh, now we're playing God of War 4. This is just the beginning of the game. And I think looks, I mean, it looks pretty insane for the full HD. Of course, it's only 1080p. But I mean, these graphics cards can play the same as the counterpart in gaming graphics cards. The exact counterpart of this RTX A4000 is going to be the RTX 3060, actually. The RTX 3060 is the same chip, the same actually features of the NVIDIA Quadro besides only the driver optimization for these professional ISB certifications that they have from companies like the Soul Systems, like ANSYS, like um, Siemens, Autodesk and all these kind of certifications, PTC for example as well, Adobe, all these kinds of certifications are only valid for those NVIDIA Quadro graphics card actually. And that's the actually only the main difference, the main reason and of course, the, they are a little bit always underclocked in comparisons to the counterparts of gaming graphics cards. 
as, as just mentioned, they are a little bit underclocked and with not that much um, overclock capabilities enabled because they want to be reliable. NVIDIA really wants these graphics cards to be reliable 24 7, 365 days per day, which is, of course, always when people need these graphics cards, they should be working and performing at the max capacity. So, I mean, I will just close this game because it makes no, 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 it makes no sense for me to keep playing this. I just want to show you that the capabilities of gaming of this RTX A4000 playing in Ultra, 1080p, God of War 4, it's going to be just pretty normal, pretty standard for a 1080p as the same as a 3060. So let's try now, let's do a, a, a test again, but now with DaVinci Resolve, I'm just installed it. I'm using my, my USB dongle that I have. And of course it's detecting the face of all the graphics card. Let's hope it has no problem because of the, of the external GPU enclosure, but it looks good. We are going to try to edit videos in, H, in Ultra HD. And I just took some fruit, footage that I'm actually recording now for this video. And I'm, because, and I'm just going to import in here, do just very, very basic stuff. And let's try to export and render the video to see how it performs, the A4000. I mean, I, I can just tell you, it's going to be probably great. Uh, yeah, we are going to allow this in the firewall because why not? No? Windows can do whatever he wants. Now I just opened the Vinci Resolve here. Let's import the actually recorded uh, clips for this video. I already saved it here. And uh, let's just import everything to the media pool. Yeah, we want to change this because probably it's going to be 30 frames per second and start instead of the 60, I guess, that uh, we defined in the beginning. So let's try editing something. And if we take a look to the task manager, the RTX A4000 is being already used here, but let's just check in the preference of DaVinci Resolve, which graphics card is going to be using and is automatically selected the NVIDIA RTX A4000, which is great. So let's start just, I know, let's just, play something I was just testing there I'm here I'm just actually taking taking a look to the likes and if you take a look I mean this is going to play perfectly there is no delay there is no retarded there it's going it's just going to perform it's just going to make a great job actually because it's insanely good this graphics card like you know to play uh, to edit 4k videos actually from my Sony a7c directly it's going to it's just going to make an amazing job so that's let's i don't know let's put as an input and then let's put this as an output and then let's take the clip and then let's go to the next one maybe here i mean i just i'm just going to play some here and let's take a look now to the timeline performance and it's playing exactly 30 frames per second as we want because that is actually how it should work. I mean, this is a professional graphics card from the second latest generation of NVIDIA professional professional lineup, which is just going to be great. For 500 US dollars, 500 euros, I can just really recommend this graphics card to you. The RTX A4000, amazing graphics card, professional feature, ISV certification for all that professional software that you may require at your job as a creator, as an engineer, as a hobbyist, maybe you are really into 3D printing, but doing like massive assemblies, doing massive construction. Maybe you are an expert on CNC and you have your own workshop and you just want reliability in a graphics card. For you, it's exactly made the RTX A4000 because the 5000 and 6000 series of these professional graphics cards, not a lot of people require them, to be honest. In my experience, since I was very, very young, the only people that really require those extra performance for these professional graphics applications are those people or those machines that have a really specific task to do. For example, a rendering machine that only do GPU rendering. Those kind of machines require even more power. Or people that really make graphic design and they really need to render as much as frames as they can instantly. Those people require the other level of graphics cards but for all of you guys that really make maybe maybe even if you are doing assemblies with hundreds of the components as i just show you 
this is going to be enough. If you are doing only 3D printing of a small parts or, or small assemblies, if you are an engineer, if you are a creator and you have a YouTube channel doing some DIY or something like that and you are making maybe robots, 3D printing components, good components, lasering, engraving and you need 3D modeling capabilities, this graphics card is going to be perfect for you. If you are a student that also likes gaming but it has to have this SOLIDBOX features of these Autodesk features enabled, this graphic card is for you because the price now really enables you and allows you even to be able to purchase this. And believe me, you are not going to regret buying this kind of graphics card, of graphics card as the RTX A4000. Amazing GPU, I would say one of the best price performance graphics cards that you can buy in the quadro lines nowadays in 2022 at the end and just expect it to be a little bit cheaper. Just expect this to be cheaper and the performance is going to be still great and as I just mentioned if you are a creator you have still all those features that RTX graphics cards are giving to you but in a quadro graphics card. So that's my review for this day. Wait for my next video. I'm going to be building a new PC that I'm really um, I'm very excited building my new PC and of course the RTX A4000 is going to be the main GPU of this graphic card but because for me as a PhD student as a mechanic uh, as a mechatronic engineer as an IT professional this graphics card gives me everything that I need and even from this small YouTube channel that I have rendering videos DaVinci Resolve video editing is going to be amazing for 4k video editing is going to be amazing as I just show you as well in the in the other test that I made with with DaVinci Resolve, it's just going me it's, go, it's just going to help me with exactly the task that I have. So thank you very much, guys, for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Maybe it's a little bit long, but like always, I give you real examples of what these GPUs can do, and I just hope this information is helpful as well for you. So thank you very much for watching, and see you until the next time.